This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Manchester MP asked police to probe gun-wielding man in viral video. Manchester Central Member of Parliament Rhoda Crawford says she has referred to the police a video which emerged on the weekend showing a man with a firearm. The man was clad in a shirt that had her image. Crawford speaking in Bombay, Manchester this morning at the launch of the Free Public Wi-Fi Initiative said she does not condone criminality. She also appealed to the maker of the video or anyone with information on it to support the police in their investigation. I do not support criminality and the criminality of any sort must not be tolerated in our country and in this constituency, she said. Just last month at the Jamaica Labour Party's annual conference, Prime Minister Andrew Holness indicated that if he had things his way, the punishment for gun offences would start with the death penalty. This morning, Crawford stared clear of that controversy but reinforced that illegal gun possession was a serious offence. I also believe that illegal possession of firearm must be dealt the harshest possible penalty under the laws of Jamaica, she said. Saint and businesswoman killed a common law husband injured. A saint and businesswoman was killed and her common law husband injured during a gun attack at their house in Hazelwood, Bombay, Saint Anne on Saturday night. The deceased has been identified as a 34-year-old Swan Forbes. It's reported that shortly before 11 o'clock, Miss Forbes and her common law husband arrived home when they were attacked and shot. The police have found Miss Forbes' body in the yard. Her common law husband has been admitted to hospital. And two men were fatally shot yesterday on Water Lane in the Kingston Central Police Division. They have been identified as 30 year old Mario Myers of Stephen Street, Kingston, and 32 year old Carlington Williams of Barry Street in Kingston. The men were killed about 9.30 in the morning. No motive has been established. Special support package for entertainment industry not enough, says McIntosh. A member of the entertainment sector says the $90 million special support package earmarked for the entertainment, culture and creative industries is not enough to offset losses suffered by stakeholders due to COVID-19 restrictions. A special support package was announced on Saturday. The Ministry of Culture and Entertainment is accepting applications for grants of $60,000 per individual. More than 1,000 people are set to benefit. Chairman of the Entertainment Advisory Board, Howard McIntosh, has welcomed the great However, he is hoping that the government will do more to assist those hit hard by the financial fallout in the entertainment sector. He also said that says several practitioners in the entertainment industry have already applied successfully for the special support package. Jamaicans in U.S. custody after boats midland fall Jamaicans are among 18 people in federal custody in the United States after two boats with migrants on board made landfall in Broward County, Florida yesterday. In a Twitter post, Chief Patrol Agent Thomas Martin of U.S. Border Patrol said the first boat made landfall on Lauderdale by the sea and the nine migrants were taken into custody. He did not elaborate on how many people were on board. According to Miami Herald's news partner CBS4, the incident happened around 7 a.m. Nearly three hours later and a few miles south of the first landing, a boat landed with 15 migrants at North Atlantic Boulevard. Mr. Martin says nine additional migrants of various nationalities were taken into federal custody. Launch of Digital COVID Vaccination Card Delayed The Health Ministry is seeking to assure that it will soon resolve the technical issues that have caused a delay in public access to the digital COVID vaccination card. Online access to the card was expected today. In a statement announcing the delay, the ministry did not indicate when access will be granted. However, in the advisory about the postponement of the digital vaccine launch, the ministry said the media will be advised of a new date and a time in the coming days. Under the new system, persons who have received the COVID-19 vaccine 
will be able to download their vaccination verification cards from the Ministry of Health and Wellness's website to show proof that they have taken the job. The downloadable digital feature would bring Jamaica in line with global COVID-19 vaccination standards. 3. Escape Injury in Manchester Crash Three men narrowly escaped serious injuries following a two-vehicle crash on the Winston Jones Highway on the outskirts of Mandeville today. When the news arrived on the crash scene, the three men sought to explain how the accident happened. Reports are that about noon a Toyota Altis taxi was traveling downhill when a Toyota Crescida, traveling in the opposite direction, attempted to turn into the entrance of Grant's welding and a machine shop. May I come down the hill and the car just suddenly turned for me, the taxi driver told the news. The two occupants of the taxi said they were in shock as the accident happened. We literally hug up in the car, said the passenger. However, the driver of the Crescida blamed the taxi operator for the crash. May I turn and the car come down the hill for me, he said. Parking prohibited at the entrance of Red Rose Fish Market in downtown Kingston. Kingston and the St. Andrew Municipal Corporation Deputy Mayor Winston Ennis told the news on Friday that parking is not being allowed in front of the recently reopened Red Rose Fish Market of Spanish Town Road, downtown Kingston. He said that an area at the back of the market premises has been established for parking. The market, which reopened on November 30, had been closed since 2017. The market has been upgraded by the Urban Development Corporation at a cost of $43 million. Kingston Mayor Delroy Williams told a recent council meeting that he had met with the fish vendors and outlined his expectations in terms of their use of the upgraded facilities. As part of the modernization of the market by the UDC, Secure storage areas have been installed for the vendors and the public sanitation facilities have been upgraded. Shaw commissions a Little Park solar powered pump station into operation. The Little Park district of St. Elizabeth now has a newly commissioned solar powered pump station that will benefit 390 farmers within the area. Implemented by the National Irrigation Commission, the project comprises a photovoltaic system utilizing 600 solar panels along with 2 kilowatt inverters. Located on one and a half acres of land, the pump station will be able to self-generate 37% of the energy required for the pump facility. With this upgrade, the NIC's annual electricity bill from the Jamaica Public Service Company Limited is projected to be reduced by 20% or $9 million. Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries Audley Shaw said at the commissioning ceremony for the project on Thursday, December 16. The solar project is expected to provide significant support to agricultural production within the Little Park area as the farmers will now have greater and more reliable access to water. An additional two phases of the project will come on stream shortly geared at increasing the total capacity at the pump station to 350 kilowatts. The system is designed to withstand a Category 4 hurricane wind pressures and is aimed at utilizing renewable energy to reduce the water production cost. This is the third NIC pump facility to be retrofitted, joining the Bengal Pump Station in Trelawney and the Ebony Park in Clarendon. We want agriculture to rebound as one of the top industries in Jamaica, and it is projects like this one as a Little Park F3 pump station that will facilitate the recovery of the sector, Shaw explained. The agriculture minister added that, as the issue of climate change becomes more widespread, decisive action needs to be taken in the area of energy systems that are being utilized. This, he said, is in line with the government's commitment to developing and implementing policies and the systems to mitigate the impacts of the climate crisis and the maximizing usage of renewable energy. KSAMC again promises to go after unscrupulous developers. The Kingston and the St. Andrew Municipal Corporation is promising to pursue legal action against developers who construct residential and commercial structures contrary to their building permits. Mayor of Kingston Delroy Williams told the news that the corporation will be doing our checks with the police and our building officers 
and inviting police during our checks. We will be doing our checks with the police, both our municipal police and building officers and police and, and inviting the police doing our check, checks to ensure that, that developers are not, and contractor, contractors are not doing work, construction work on Sundays and the public holidays and outside of the time allotted for construction work to take place during weekdays. The KCC, in its conditions of approval, is, has made it very clear in terms of what are the hours for construction work to take place. And it's also specified in law that there are no work is to take place on Sundays and public holidays. The municipality is, is divided into zones. So a, a particular building officer is assigned to a particular zone. and. The, in the past, that building officer would handle that matter. Our, our applications within that zone, what we're saying now is that in the case of multifamily development, at least four building officers must handle an application from start to finish. Another that we have introduced is that the chairman of the building committee now will also stamp and sign our building plans. So now we will have three persons um, stamping and signing the building plans. Those are plans that would have been approved by the building committee. We are handling roughly 700, 800 building applications annually. And that building application from start to finish is a, is a rigorous process. And, is it, and it's a process that requires several site visits. And it's a highly technical process. You would include now the planning aspect of an application that also requires far more planning officers in the planning department. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.